Welcome to the review for the 7th grade PBL FDP Connections test. I hope that going through these questions together will help you to be even more prepared for our test later this week. Part 1 is vocabulary and you've seen all of this before, but we're going to go over it again. In a fraction we have a numerator and a denominator. The top number or the north number is the numerator. The bottom number, or the one that's down, is the denominator. Then our numerator becomes our dividend, divided by the divisor, and the answer to our division problem is a quotient. Part two of your test is fraction decimal percent conversions. Number six, you and your friends have watched one-eighth of a movie. What percent of the movie have you watched? First, we need to divide the numerator by the denominator. Eight does not go into one, so I need to add a decimal, which I put in my answer, and a zero. Eight goes into ten one time. Follow along as I complete this division problem. Notice that when I have a remainder, I need to add a zero and bring it down to continue dividing. Now I have a decimal. My next step is to move the decimal point two places to the right and add a percent sign. So if I have 125 thousandths and I move the decimal point two places to the right, I'm going to end up with 12.5 percent. Number seven, Tim the tool man must make exact measurements when he is building a new house. His plan requires 0.246 of a board for a kitchen shelf. His assistant wants to explain to Tim how to write this as a fraction. Write an ACID answer to explain how to change this decimal to a fraction. So on your test, you're not going to actually have to work out a problem like this, but you will need to be able to choose an answer that explains it fully. The way that I would explain this to Tim would be to let him know that he needs to first say it. 0 0.246 is really 246 thousandths. So first, I would say it. Second, I would write it. 246 one thousandths. And then I would simplify it. I would figure out what I can divide by on the top and the bottom to simplify the fraction so that I know I can divide this by 2 and 1,000 by 2. So I'm going to end up with 123 over 500. And I cannot continue simplifying, so that would be my answer. So you would just need to be able to explain how to work this problem, not actually work it out yourself. Number eight, there are 12 members of the Crowley Babysitters Club. At the end of each month, all of the babysitters divide up their earnings equally. What percent of the tips does each babysitter receive? So first I need to write the fraction. I don't need to know how much money they actually make because I just need to know what percent of the total they're making. So if there are 12 babysitters and each one gets an equal amount, my fraction is 1 12th. For step two, I'm going to divide the numerator by the denominator, and it's really important that we say that correctly. The numerator divided by the denominator is one divided by 12. Again, I cannot divide 12 into one, so I need to add a decimal and a zero. 12 does not go into 10, so I need to add another zero. 12 goes into 100 eight times. 8 times 12, I can work that out over here. 8 times 12 is 96. So when I subtract, I get 4. Again, I can't just stop. I need to keep going when I have a remainder. 12 goes into 40 
three times. Three times 12 is 36. And I subtract and get four. It looks like I may have a repeating decimal, but first I'm going to check. So bring down another zero. 12 goes into 40, three times. Three times 12 is 36. I get four when I subtract. So yes, I do have a repeating decimal. So my repeating sign goes over the three. And step three says to move the decimal point two places to the right and add a percent sign. So I'm going to move one, two places to the right. And I'm going to add a percent sign. Don't forget that repeating bar over the three. So each babysitter gets about 8.3%. Let's look at number nine. Percent means per 100. Cent means 100. So percent means per 100. So anytime you want to change a percent to a fraction, just put the entire percent over 100. For example, if I wanted to change 25% um, into a fraction, I would just write 25 over 100, and then I can simplify. The next part of your test will be sale prices and discounts. So number 10, you are shopping for shoes and notice that Foot Locker has all of their shoes 50% off. The shoes that you want are normally $84.22. What is the sale price? And remember, you need to pay close attention to whether they're asking for the sale price like they are here, or are they asking for the amount of the discount? So be, be very careful about what they're actually asking for. Step one is always to change the percent to a decimal. So 50%, I'm going to drop that percent sign. My decimal point is always at the end unless they tell me it's somewhere else. And I'm gonna move the decimal two places to the left so that I end up with 5 tenths. Then I'm going to multiply by the original price. So if I have $84.22 and multiply by 5 tenths, remember I do not need to line up the decimal point when I'm multiplying. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 2 plus 1 is 11. 5 times 4 plus 1 is 21. 5 times 8 plus 2 is 42. And then I need to count how many digits I have after the decimal. I have one, two, three digits after the decimal. So I'm going to have three digits after the decimal here. So if they were asking me how much money I'm actually saving, the answer would be $42.11. But that's not what they're asking. Remember, they're asking for the sale price. So then I need to do the third step, which is to subtract. My original amount, $84.22 minus the amount that I'm saving, $42.11. We do need to line up our decimal points when we subtract, and we subtract from the right. So the sale price is also $42.11, and you're gonna notice that anytime it's 50% off, the amount of the discount and the amount that I'm actually paying will be the same, but that only works when it's 50% off. Number 11, Mr. Sapp is buying a new backpack, which is normally $54.88 on walmart.com. They are on sale for 25% off this weekend only. Mr. Sapp calculates that he will only have to pay $13.72. Is he correct? Why or why not? So on your test, you're going to have several options and you're going to need to be able to know why he's correct or why he's incorrect. So for this, we're just going to go ahead and, and look at it. Um, if it's $54.88 normally, and it's 25% off, I need to kind of do a reality check here. 25% off is less than half. If it's 25% off, I'm going to be paying the other 75%. So 75% 
is what I'm actually paying. That's more than half, which means that the amount I'm paying should be more than half of $58.88. Is $13.72 more than half of $54.88? No, it's not. It's less than half. And so I would say he is not correct. But then I need to be able to explain that. So if I have um, $54.88, $13.72 is actually the amount that I'm saving. That's the 25% off. He's going to be paying the other amount. Okay, for number 12 and 13, we need to know that your favorite team's hoodie is 15% off and the normal price is $48. So first we want to know the amount of the discount. We need to change the percent to a decimal. These are the same steps that we've always gone through. Same three steps. So 15%. I'm going to drop that decimal point. Remember, I'm sorry, drop the percent sign. The decimal point is always at the end. And to change from a percent to a decimal, I move two places to the left. So this becomes 15 hundredths. Then I'm going to multiply by the original price. $48 times 15 hundredths. Now some people would rather actually write out $48 times 15 hundredths. You're going to get the same answer either way, but we're going to go ahead and do it the shorter way this time. So follow along as I multiply on paper. Be sure to cross out what you've carried so you don't use it again and I need to add a zero or an X or something as a placeholder here. And now I'm just going to add. I have one, two digits behind the decimal in my problem, so I'm going to have two digits behind the decimal in my answer. So since it's just asking me for the amount of the discount or how much am I saving, $7.20 is the amount that I'm saving. Let's do a reality check. If he saves 15%, 15% off, that's less than half of $48. Is $7.20 less than half of $48? Yes, it is. So that means that my answer does make sense. Number 13 asks us to finish the rest of the problem. What is the sale price? So that's step three. Once I've changed the percent to a decimal, and I've multiplied by the original price to find the amount that I'm saving, now I can find out how much I actually have to pay. The original price was $48, and here, yes, I do need to line up the decimal point, so I need my zeros. I'm going to bring down my decimal and subtract. Okay, I need to borrow here, so this is going to become 10, and this becomes 7. So my sale price, or the amount that I'm paying, is $40.80. Let's do a reality check again. If I'm saving 15%, that means I'm paying the other 85%. 85% is more than half, and $40.80 is more than half of $48. So my answers do make sense. Number uh, 14, your next section is tipping at a restaurant. So number 14 says, what is considered a normal tip for a restaurant? And normally, it's about 15%, although it's up to your discretion or um, your opinion as to how much you actually tip. But 15% is pretty customary in the U.S. For problems 15 to 17, you'll need to know Ms. Machado and Ms. Hindi went to Olive Garden for lunch. They ordered one appetizer for $9, two entrees for $13.50 each, and one dessert for $5.50. So first, I need to actually figure out what was their total bill before the tip. I'm going to add up the numbers. So I have $9. I have two entrees for $13.50 each. And I have a dessert for $5.50. So we're just going to add, make sure that those decimal points are lined up. One plus nine is 10, 13, 
16 plus 5 is 21. So 4150 is the amount before the tip. Number 16 says they had a pretty good server, so we're going to calculate a 15% tip, and it says to the nearest cent. So if it goes on and on for more than two decimal places, we're just going to round to the nearest cent. Step one is to convert the percent to a decimal. Notice that we are doing the exact same steps that we would use when we're calculating a sale price or a discount. So 15%, I'm going to drop that percent sign. My decimal point is here, and I'm going to move two places to the left to give, uh, to give me 15 hundredths. Then I'm going to multiply by the total for the food. So 4150 times 15 hundredths. Follow along as I do this multiplication on paper. Get rid of what I carried. I need a placeholder zero. We're going to try to squeeze this in here. Okay, and I have one, two, three, four digits that need to go behind the decimal. One, two, three, four. So I end up with, so you can see this a little bit better, 6.2250. Well, I can't keep all of that for money. I need to only have this much. So let's look at the five. What does the five tell me to do with the two? Well, it tells me to round up. So I'm going to end up with $6.23 as the amount for the tip. Number 17 says, what is the total amount Ms. Hindi and Ms. Machado paid for their lunch, including tip? So I'm just going to add. This is the only difference between sale price and tipping. When I'm calculating sale price, I need to subtract at the end because I'm saving money. When I'm calculating a tip, I need to add at the end because I'm actually paying more than I'm being charged on, uh, on my bill. So I have $41.50 plus $6.23. So altogether, we're going to end up paying $47.73 at the restaurant. Now let's see if this makes sense. Do a reality check. A 15% tip, that's less than half. In fact, that's even less than a fourth. 623 is less than a fourth of 4150, so my tip makes sense. And when I'm adding, I've lined up my decimal points. And 41, around $41 plus around $6 would give me around $47. So it does make sense. Number 18. Wanda the waitress sold $651 worth of food and made $100 in tips. This should say her. Did her customers tip more or less than 15%? And justify your answer. So we have a couple of options. We can either solve uh, using our tip method or we can use a percent proportion. And I'll show you both ways. So for option one, um, you don't actually need to calculate um, the $100 in there, you just need to figure out, okay, I need to know if it's more or less than 15%. Let's figure out what 15% would be for a tip, and then we'll compare it to $100. So change that percent to a decimal. So drop the percent sign, move the decimal two places to the left, and I end up with 15 hundredths. Then I'm going to multiply by the amount, 651 times 15 hundredths, I'm sorry that we're getting a little short on space here. Five times one is five. Go ahead and follow along with me. Okay, so, uh, so that you can see this a little better, I got nine, seven, six, five. And I have one, two digits behind the decimal. So 97.65, that would be a 15% tip. Well, I made $100 in tips, so did I make more or less than 97.65? I made more, which means that I made more than 15%. 
Now if we wanted to do this as a percent proportion, I could figure out what is 15 percent of $651, or I could figure out $100 is what percent of $651. So let's see, if my part is $100, separate this out a little bit, out of a total of $651, I want to know what percent that is, so that's my X over 100 percent. And I could cross multiply to find out the percentage. And what I would get is a percentage that's a little bit more than 15 percent. The next part of your test is percent proportions. Number 19, there are 400 fans in the stands at the Crowley homecoming game. 45 percent of the fans are parents. How many of the fans are parents? So, part over whole equals percent over 100. Another way to say that is is over of equals percent over 100. So let's set up our problem here. I know that 100 always goes here, and my percent goes up here, and I know 45 percent, so I'm filling in what I know. 400 fans, is that the part or the whole? Well, I know that's the whole because there are 400 total fans, and only a part of those are parents. So I can either cross multiply or I can use relationships. Here I see a really easy relationship. I see that 100 times 4 will give me 400. So I know that 45 times 4 will give me x. Let's figure this out. That's 20. 4 times 4 plus 2 is 18. So it should be x equals 180 parents. Let's do a reality check. 45% of the fans are parents. That's less than half. Is 180 less than half of 400? Yes, it is. It's pretty close, but it's less than half. Number 20. Bluebell Ice Cream Company served 80 people or, I'm sorry, surveyed 80 people about their favorite ice cream brands. They learned that 75% of those surveyed prefer Bluebell. What percent of the people surveyed prefer, uh, prefer Bluebell? And what that should say, guys, I'm sorry, it should say how many of the people surveyed prefer Bluebell. So, this is the same kind of situation. Part over whole equals percent over 100. And I know 75%, that's the easiest one to place. Or if I don't know the percent, I know that the X goes there. And they surveyed a total of 80 people. So I want to know how many actually prefer Bluebell. So in this case, there's not a really simple, easy way for me to find a relationship, even though there's always a relationship in a proportion. So I am going to cross multiply. 100 times x is 100x, and 75 times 80, let's work that out. Oops, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to add a zero. 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 7 is 56, plus 4 is 60. And there's nothing after the decimal point, so 6,000 is correct here. So 100x equals 6,000. Now one of the rules of algebra is that whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other. And another rule is that to get x by itself, I want to do the opposite of what it tells me to do. It's telling me to multiply by 100, so I'm going to do the opposite, and I'm going to divide by 100. 100 divided by 100 is 1, so I end up with just 1x, and I can cross those out, and I've got an x by itself. But remember, whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other, so I'm going to divide 6,000 by 100 also. Oops, I'm sorry. Got carried away there. So x equals, I can cross out my zeros, 60. Or you could actually do 6,000 divided by 100, 100 goes into 6, no, doesn't go into 60, goes into 600 six times. 
I get zero. Got to finish out that problem. 100 goes into zero, zero times. And I get the same 60. So 60 people prefer Bluebell. Let's do a reality check. 75% is 3 fourths of 80. I'm sorry, is 3 fourths. Um, and 60 is 3 fourths of 80, so my answer does make sense. And the last part of your test is estimating. Number 21, estimate how many gumballs are in the picture below based on what we can see. So we're just looking to see what we can see. Now I could count and tell you exactly how many gumballs there are, but that's not the purpose of this. It's just to estimate. And I want you to be able to tell me, um, would eight be a good number? Well, no, it's obviously well more than eight. Um, what about 8,000? No, it's a lot less than 8,000. So I want you to be able to make a reasonable guess based on what you see and based on just using, um, using reality and, um, and being as specific as you can without actually counting. Number 22. <coughs> I can fit seven whatchamacallits into box A below. Estimate how many I could fit into box B. Well, I can figure out that box A is about this size. So if I divide this box into approximately the same size boxes, and obviously I'm not being extremely accurate here. So these are like half size boxes. <coughs> And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So this is about 21 times as big as box A. And so I could just multiply 21 times 7. So about 147. Or you could even estimate further. You could say, eh, 21, that's about 20 times 7 would be 140. Estimating is really um, up to you to a large degree. You're using common sense and you're trying to think through the process to get as close of an answer as you can without being exact. Number 23. The 7th grade PBL teachers went shopping. Ms. Fields spent $141.29. Ms. Hindi spent $112.73. Ms. Machado spent $79.08. Mr. Sapp spent $41.18. Estimate how much the four teachers spent in total. So one way of doing this would be to add 141 because 29 cents, we're going to round down. I'll round this one up and get $113. I'll round this down to $79. And I'll round this down to $1. Let's see, that's 4, 13, 14, 5, 6, 6 plus 7 is 13, 13 plus 4 is 17, and then I've got 3, so about $374. That's one way to do it. You could also round to the nearest $10 and say $140, $110, $80, and that would be another way to estimate. You just want to find some way that you can logically estimate. And then for number 24, you're going to need to write on this one. Explain the reasoning used for your estimate in number 23. I'm looking for a short essay response with solid explanations and complete sentences. So remember that means we're starting with a capital letter, ending with a period, and you're explaining it in such a way that I can understand the process you went through. And if I wanted to repeat it, I could do that using your directions. And number 25, I don't want to give too much away, but there will be a guessing, uh, a guessing game, like a little contest on test day, and you're going to want to make sure that your estimation skills are really good so that you can, uh, so that you can win that contest. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. My email address is Adrian Hindi or I'm sorry, adrian.hindy at crowley 
dot k12 dot tx dot us and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have before we come upon the test. Good luck and happy studying!